millennia, water spread across the broad expanse of the Florida Everglades. But in the last 100 years or so, man blocked its path with roads and dug canals to drain and reroute its course. Now some parts of the Everglades have too much water and some have too little. The problem is the Everglades are our water supply and there is only 40 percent of the natural Everglades left after man's uh, uh, drainage and decimation of the natural environment. Historically, the Everglades got its water from a chain of lakes in the Kissimmee River system. It would rain and the water would flow down into Lake Okeechobee, which is the second largest lake in the United States, overflow its southern rim and flow into the Everglades, which was called the River of Grass, and flow at a very slow pace all the way down to Florida Bay. One and a half billion dollars has already been spent, and Florida is planning to spend at least another 500 million to help restore what humans so unwisely interrupted. Scientists at this living laboratory have created a scale model of the Everglades on 80 acres they call Lila. It has identical land features to the 1.6 million acres of the Everglades, and it has a huge circulating pump that lets researchers experiment with how fast and how much water flows to any part of it. Researchers have learned the ideal water conditions for wading birds and mosquito fish. In one small section of this outdoor laboratory, researchers are using Cheerios and a video camera to map surface flow. We have a pretty good idea as to what's going on, but we don't know for sure, and nobody does. Researchers use probes at different depths to map current flow. As you're looking at this, the red trace is the streamwise direction. But water in a marsh is shallow, moves around roots and through grass and under plants like water lilies. It doesn't take a single path the way water does in the middle of a river. So scientists use an instrument that measures how water disperses. You guys stay in the middle. You too, Dave. In this experiment, they line up seven of the devices across an open section of the marsh. A red dye solution is poured into the water to see how it spreads. The lead researcher predicted it would take the dye an hour and a half to cross the finish line. It took 10 minutes. That's why we're running the experiment. And that's A669 A and so on, right? Engineers can apply what these researchers learn to get water running again where there's too much of it and let it flow into places where there's much too little of it, like the Everglades National Park. Then the Florida panther, the wood stork, the manatee, and lots of other creatures will come back to this immense American wetland. For Assignment Earth, this is Bruce Burkhardt.